Today in the news, we got some custom cards, a name change, and some brand new phones. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. It's been almost two weeks since the RX 5700 series have come out, and we haven't heard anything official yet about third-party custom cards. That is until today, where a newcomer in the GPU market, ASRock, revealed their Challenger line of GPUs. They announced one model for each card with the RX 5700 Challenger 8GOC and the RX 5700 XT Challenger 8GOC. If we look at the RX 5700 model, there is something a little odd with the clock speeds. It gets an OC for both the base and the game clock, but the boost clock stays the same. Same thing happens on the 5700 XT. Anyways, the card looks quite normal from the front with a dual fan design and four thick 8mm heat pipes that run through the entire card. Also, a welcome addition to the custom design is a backplate. Thank you, ASRock. Although the heatsink is exposed from the back and does extend quite a bit further than the actual board. Bit of an odd choice in design, would have preferred to see that backplate span the whole area. MSI also flaunted their RX 5700 XT, but no specs were available for it. The mech OC might be a little bit smaller judging by the fan positioning, and let's hope it also has a backplate. If it doesn't, I'm sure one of the three other MSI models will have one. Man, add in board partners are really having a field day with the RX series. Next up, it looks like Toshiba wants to change its name. Not the whole company, but its whole memory division, which is pretty big. They will be rebranding to Kyoxia, which is a blend of the Japanese word Kyoku, which means memory, and the Greek word Axia, which means value. With that name, they will make it a point to deliver large capacity and high performance storage. Looking at the list of the current company names, it looks like this will be the final nail in the OCZ coffin. In case you didn't know, OCZ was a RAM and SSD manufacturer up until 2013 when they were ready to declare bankruptcy. Toshiba bought them out and absorbed the company, but the name stuck a little bit longer until now. Goodbye, old friend. On the Nintendo Switch front, it looks like we are finally seeing the effects of the changes in SoC that we discussed a few days ago. Thanks to what is probably a die shrink, the newer Nintendo Switches will offer a significantly better battery life. The existing Switch model number have a serial number that starts with XAW. Those have a battery life between two and a half and six and a half hours, while the newer models that start with uh, XKW will have a battery life between 4.5 and nine hours. Hours. That's like 33% more. Apparently this revision will hit the shelves in August, so if you were looking for a Switch, maybe hold off a little longer and get the newer one. Or if the older model gets a price cut and you plan on playing mostly in TV mode, you could get that one too. Let's move on to some smartphone news. Sony is well known for their flagship Xperia line, which features an extremely high pixel per inch display. The latest Xperia 1 features an ultra wide 21 by 9 4K display, which is technically not 4K, but we'll let it slide. That phone has 643 pixels per inch. Now, what if I told you that the next Xperia 1R is going to feature an even higher PPI? Well, according to Notebook Check, the 1R will feature a 5K display with a a resolution of 5040 by 2160. That's 900 pixels per inch packed into a 6.5 inch display. That's just insane. I don't even know if Sony really wants to sell it. I mean, clearly it's overkill, but maybe that's what they want. A sort of limited supply showcase type of phone with a dummy high resolution. Also in smartphone news, it looks like Asus is ready to launch their second generation ROG phone. The ROG Phone 2, very original name, should be launched on July 23rd. That's just nine months after the first ROG phone. Apparently, Asus Tech lost close to $8 million with that first device, but thinks that it could regain profitability this year. The phone will feature the brand new Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 Plus with a higher clock speed and the Adreno 640 GPU, which also also gets an increase in clock speeds. Asus is one of the few manufacturers who actually thinks a little more about the uh, experience rather than just the specs. It has cool accessories like the twin view and features like air trigger. I really hope that they can stay in the market long enough to have uh, more affordable devices. Let's just say that the ROG phone was kind of expensive. 
All right, that is pretty much it for the news today, guys. If you have any questions, you know where to put them. The news are getting a little thin these days, so let me know if there's a subject that you'd like me to dive into. You can also DM me on Twitter too. I take time to answer, but I usually get through all of my messages. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. You know what? I feel generous. Let me put a, a, a beat I made last month on, uh, on the outro music. Take care. Yeah.